I was using the Nano VNA version 2 or V2 to check out some uh, Wi-Fi antennas. Uh, these, uh, I'm sure you've seen, they're uh, antennas that are used on routers like uh, that one up there. Uh, this particular one isn't actually a router, it's a range extender, but you see there's two antennas there. But in the process, it reminded me of something that, uh, frankly, I've been aware of for some time, and I haven't seen anybody do a, a video on this, so I thought I would. And that is the different kinds of SMA connectors. Now, why would working on these antennas cause me to think about SMA connectors? Well, the reason is because here are two antennas, okay? You see that one of them, the connector has a pin in the center. I hope you can see that. The other one does not have a pin in the center. Well, the reason is these are two different types of SMA connectors. Even though they look from the outside, if you looked at them like this, you wouldn't know the difference until you looked inside. And you realize that, gee, this one won't plug into some SMA connectors if, if the other side has a pin. And this one won't make any connection unless the other side does have a pin. Well, the reason is this is a standard SMA connector, and the one on the left is called reverse polarity. So I thought I would talk about that and then a little bit about buying uh, SMA uh, cables. Because when you're, when you're doing experiments with things like this uh, Nano VNA, the connectors are SMA connectors. Well, you have a couple of problems. One is you might have an unusual, or I should say a reverse polarity SMA connector, like the one on the left, in which case it will not attach to those connectors, at least not properly. In fact, if you try to pur put a reverse polarity uh, SMA connector See if I can get it to uh, focus. There we go. If you try to put that on the Nano VNA, you'll get no connection. And you'll think the antenna is bad, but it's not. It's actually a perfectly fine antenna. So, here is an antenna. It's In fact, it's exactly the same kind of antenna as this. It came off the same router as this one. And, and yet I have it connected to the Nano VNA, and you can see that it has a nice return loss dip at uh, about 2400, let me see if I can read that. Yeah, about 2400 uh, megahertz. Maybe we can zoom in and you can see it too. Well, maybe it's not going to focus. The uh, there you go, twenty four fifty. It looks like to me. So uh, at any rate, so what's all this stuff about uh, reverse polarity and so on? Well, it's something you have to watch out for when buying SMA cables. Let's get an idea, though, of why I was able to use this reverse polarity antenna on this standard polarity Nano VNA. And the reason is, you'll notice there's a little adapter here. Well, here are some adapters. hope those will focus. And you may notice that the ones on the left both have pins in the center, even though they look like they are opposite polarity, but a, uh, a connector is normally specified based on 
the uh, connection point nearest the center in the case of coax connectors. So because both of these have male pins, these are both called male SMA connectors. However, these are normally not called, and, and by the way, the things that they mate with are called female SMA connectors. So, for example, this, which is uh, just a simple barrel adapter, notice it has a female uh, center, but it mates with a normal male SMA, so this is not called reverse polarity. But when you have, for example, something like this, where the center is female, but it will not mate with a uh, a normal SMA connector. Instead, it will only mate with a reverse polarity, or, or it will only mate in reverse polarity. So, let's take a look at some cables. With most VNAs that you buy today, the Nanos and so on, you get a pair of cables usually like this, that are, uh, they are male-to-male -male connectors. Notice that there are pins on both ends. So those work fine on the Nano VNA. They will connect, for example, to this. But if you try to connect something to the end of this, for example, one of the, uh, if you're trying to calibrate, you would, at the end of this cable, you would like to put your short open and load right on the end of this, but you can't do that. Let's take a look at why. So here are short open load. Let me see if I can get a little more light on that. short open load that normally come with the Nano VNA. Notice that they have the pin in the center. Now there's one that's called the open. Uh, I guess that's not it. Maybe this is the open here that does not have a pin. So it really doesn't matter on that one and besides you want an open connection anyway. But there's no way you can connect these to the ends of this cable. Maybe it'll focus in a minute. Because, if I can turn that one up a little bit, so you can see it. Well, well let's, let's look at the load. Here, I'll put it down. Okay. And the reason you can't do that is because this has a pin in the center, and so does this. So what you have to do is use a, a barrel adapter. The, now these barrel adapters are usually supplied with the Nano VNA as well. But the problem is that, that then when you calibrate, you wind up with the calibration point being out here at the end of this barrel connector, that is where my left thumb is, not at the connection point of this connector. So you're off by this much. Well, on lower frequencies that doesn't matter, but of course, as you probably know, as you get up in the hundreds of megahertz, and certainly when you get into the gigahertz range, that little distance does make a difference. So, what can you do about that? Well, one thing is you could buy a very expensive reverse SMA calibration set.
But what you also can do is you can buy adapters at very little cost. In fact, these are adapters from a set that I bought of about 20 or 30 different kinds of adapters. It's a mix. And you'll notice that some of these are reverse polarity and some, for example, this T is normal polarity. So one of the things that I suggest you do in addition to buying a variety of cables and once again, this is if you're going to be doing quite a bit of work. In addition to uh, different cables, and by that I mean things like, let me uh, try to zoom out a little bit here. Look for different size cables. So for example, this cable and this cable are uh, obviously of different lengths. Let me bend those around so that you can see that. And so what you're looking for is a cable that is just right. Think of it as a Goldilocks uh, cable. You want a cable that is exactly the right length to go between whatever you are connecting from to whatever you are connecting to. Okay, that seems pretty obvious, but you go to order cables and you can make some mistakes. Let me show you that. Here are two cables, both of which are designed to adapt or to connect between a device with an N connector and a device with an SMA connector. When you order these online, since you can't actually inspect them usually, you have to decide whether the pictures you see online are good enough for you to determine what is the actual polarity of these SMA connectors. Notice they are they are different. This is a normal SMA connector with a pin. This is a reverse polarity SMA connector. From the outside they look just the same and from most internet pictures. You have to make sure you know what you're ordering because if you need a reverse polarity, for example, if you want to connect to a device like the router that needs a reverse polarity connector, then you want to get this kind of cable. On the other hand, if you want to connect to a device that has a standard polarity connector like the Nano VNA, then you need this type. So when buying uh, cables online, be sure that you are that you inspect the type of SMA connector. And I will uh, warn you that not all uh, descriptions of cables include the phrase RP or reverse polarity. So these cables are often sold online. It's perfectly natural for somebody who works with, say, with uh, Wi-Fi equipment because a lot of Wi-Fi and GPS equipment use reverse polarity connectors. But most people doing other RF work at higher frequencies tend to use the normal polarity connectors. Of course, what you can do is buy some adapters, as I mentioned earlier. Here is a whole string of adapters. This is a T. Hope this will... Uh, focus. There we go. This is actually a T. There is an adapter on this end and an adapter on this end. I keep them together like this partly just to keep them clean so they uh, protect them from dust. They, they make little yellow covers for these but when you have a lot of them like I do you don't have enough yellow covers. Uh, then there is a barrel adapter in between there. Then this is a standard SMA to reverse polarity SMA. 
then another adapter, and finally at the end, uh, a third adapter. And some of these are reverse polarity on both sides, some are standard polarity on both sides, and some are standard on one side and reverse polarity on the other. So why don't you just buy a bunch of adapters? Well, one thing you really don't want to do is have a bunch of adapters in the middle of an RF uh, measurement setup. Because every one of these adapters not only adds length, but it also adds additional loss and additional frequency dependence. Now, most SMA connectors are rated up to 18 gigahertz. There are some that will even go higher than that. They're very expensive, though, and hard to get a hold of, or at least you have to pay a lot of money for them. But the fact is, many of these, including a lot of the cheap adapters that you buy online, are really not very good above 3 gigahertz. I've even found a couple that didn't even work to that level. In fact, there are a couple of uh, 50 ohm SMA loads that I bought that barely would go to a gigahertz. So you often get what you pay for. And the only way to really know ahead of time is to look at the reviews and other things. But of course, as you know, a lot of the reviews online are, are fake reviews written by people being paid by the seller. And so what I suggest is that you look at what what is being uh, used by the people around you. And on many of my videos, I say this, and I don't think most people understand how important it can be. Try to become a part of a local group. Doesn't have to be a very large group, but a local group like an amateur radio club or a, a science club or a, a, an electronics club or something of that sort, where you can exchange with people you trust information about things like adapters and cables and the quality of those cables and adapters. These happen to both be quite good, but one thing you need to be careful of is there are a lot of cheap cables online that use this this style coax, at least it looks like this, but often it doesn't meet the requirements or the specifications of the uh, true coax. Same is sometimes true, although less so, of this coax. Normally the, the larger coax, in my experience anyway, tend to be more reliable than the small ones. You get the small coax and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. But even if it's good and you bend it too sharply, the, the small coax can also go uh, south on you. So, I started out playing with the Nano VNA V2 and testing some Wi-Fi antennas, and I wound up talking about cables and connectors and reverse polarities and all of that. I hope this has been useful to you and gives you some things to watch out for when you're ordering connectors, cables, adapters, and so on online. Once again, look forward to some, some more stuff in the future, but in the meantime, stay safe, have a nice day.